Good evening, and thanks for tuning in to Notations of a Nappy Girl, episode 22. Yeah, is it 22 or 23? One of the two. Don't know. I don't typically do a video. Let me fix this. I don't typically do a video on Saturdays um, because that's my rest day. Do homework, talk to family, network, stuff like that. But I kind of felt like I needed to. All right. So here's what's going on in the nation today. This is what I want to talk about. Nation events and our take on them personally as people and as human beings, you know. Everybody, for some reason, nationwide, for the past couple of hours, EBT has been down, which is SNAP benefits, which is food stamps, welfare, TANF, whatever you want to call it. All that stuff, you know, public assistance gets lumped together, dumped on a card, a credit card type thing, no matter what state you live in. Also, child support cards are not working. Now, all 50 states have something called the EPA card, which means you could either have your money deposited to this credit card or you can have it deposited to your bank account. Either one, you'll get your child support benefits. Here's my thing. Governmental interference, and I am no political analyst or nothing like that, don't have a million conspiracy theories, but I do know a couple of things. When they came out with the Epicard program, more or less that was to see which people receiving these types of benefits had bank accounts. So they said, hey, we're not going to issue any more paper checks. Why? Because they can't track them. You can cash a paper check anywhere if it's issued from the government. So we can put this in your bank account. Please give us your information or we can put this on this card. Now, here's the thing. You have a current state of affairs with the government being shut down, workers on furlough, stuff like that. Let me be clear, people. Unless you are sitting having tea with the likes of Donald Trump, Oprah Winfrey, President Obama, these House of Representative folks who shut everything down, them people are still getting their checks. You have daycare providers, pregnant women, um, children, just people in need in general who cannot get the governmental assistance that they need. Now, albeit there are some people that sit on public aid, as we call it in Chicago, for their entire life and do nothing. And they have generations of people sitting on public aid. Boom, 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 boom. I understand that. According to a survey do, did by Duke University about two to three years ago, they said, if your annual income is not equal to or greater than $60,227.00 per year, you are one paycheck away from being homeless and or needing some type of assistance. Now, I've done my research. I've checked into a couple of things. Here's the thing. People act like everybody can sit on aid and just do nothing. You have to meet certain guidelines to get on it. And people do lie. I'm not saying that they don't. People lie about their income, how many kids they get, who's pregnant, who's not. But the poverty lines are configured for federal assistance based on pre-tax money. Now, that's something that never made sense to me. How are you going to count my household based on my net, as my gross, as opposed to my net when I got to get taxes taken out? So a person like me, for instance, who only has one child, they would say, according to government standards, I can't make over $1,500 a month. That's, I can't make over that amount. Hmm. That's less than, I don't know, my math sucks. I failed algebra a couple times. But if I'm not mistaken, that's less than $10 an hour. Somewhere up and up. Um, if I make more than that pre-tax, I don't qualify for benefits. But if I have one kid who eats a lot or I eat a lot, whatever the case may be, and I just can't afford food, who's to say that I'm less than a person because I have to reach out from some level of assistance? Now, the reason what inspired this video is because I'm seeing people post on Facebook, you know, we share information. People are posting about, you know, EBT is down in this state. It's up in this state. It's down in this state. The USDA is saying this. By the way, the USDA, the U.S. Department of Agriculture is who mandates the food stamp program. And they say they are not federally funded, but why is all of this affecting them? <clears throat> Don't know. Some people are saying it's a glitch. It's a computer error. It's a system upgrade. I can't think of something affecting two national type programs. And like with child support, that's your money that your baby daddy or your baby mama worked for. And they had to pay that. Why can't you get that money? Now, 
I'll be honest with you, I'm a militant at heart, grew up in a military household. I believe in conspiracy theories. I personally think it's something about to go down, for lack of a better term. I mean, you got the government shut down. You got all these little things that keep happening. This ain't working. That ain't working. This ain't working. That ain't working. You got these furloughed, furloughed workers who aren't getting paid. You know, people that work for the EPA and different stuff like that that have nothing to do with the national deficit whatsoever. They're not getting paid either. But then you have sanctimonious individuals sitting on Facebook talking about laugh out loud, laugh my butt off. That's good for them sitting around on aid, not doing nothing. Here's my thing. How do you know they're not doing anything? How do you know? Have you gone across the nation and talked to every single person that receives federally funded governmental benefits, whether it's Section 8, whatever? Have you gone to all of them and asked them, what are you doing? Are you doing anything for this? Are you in school? Um, do you have a degree and just can't find a job? I know people who just took the bar exam and passed and can't find a job. I know people with master's degrees who can't find jobs. Hell, I have one friend. I only have one doctorate friend. But I have one friend who has her PhD and she's out of work. So, hmm, she has three kids. So chances are, even with that expensive ass degree that she paid all this money to get, she may have to go out and get some form of assistance so she can feed her babies. Because at the end of the day, that degree is not going to keep her gas on, not going to keep her lights on. She has to get some help. And it's not going to fill up their bellies at the end of the day. My message for today, people, be cognizant of the energy that you put into the universe. Be cognizant of those things that you are saying negatively about other people. Because the tides change really, really fast. And you can look up, you can walk into work Monday after you laughed all weekend about the public aid people who couldn't get their stuff. And it could be a pink slip on your desk. What you going to do? Because basically, you have to have at least six months to a year worth of salary saved up or living expenses, I'll say, as opposed to salary before you can, quote unquote, leave your job. So let's look at it this way. Say you live in a good part of the world like Florida where you could get a two-bedroom apartment for $600 a month. Okay, that's $600. No problem. But, yeah, if you're going to be out of work and you got to save up money, then you have to do the math. Well, what's, you know, $600 times 12 months? Hmm, think about that. That's about $7,200. Damn, I was quick with that one. Yay. So that's $7,000. That's just for your rent. Then you figure, hmm, light bill and gas bill together is about $200 a month. That's another $2,400. Then you figure your car note is $400 a month. That's another $4,800. Do you see where I'm going? Nobody has that kind of money sitting in their savings account right now. Because if they do, I need to come knock on their door. Can I get $5? Can, can I get something? $2? Something? I don't know. Everybody's in need. I don't care how much you try to put yourself up here. Hell, I do these videos as a way to motivate. I got bills. I got needs. I stress out. I cry. That's why my hand combed. But it is what it is. Please, please, please refrain from passing judgment on one another. Because when, when you look down on somebody, that means your eyes aren't on the road ahead, which means you yourself are now distracted. So while you looking down your nose like, mm, she's on public aid. She needs to get a better life. She shouldn't have so many baby daddies. You not looking at that iceberg that's sitting there, the size of the one that sunk the Titanic. Come on, people, pay attention. I'm not religious. I'm not biblical. But I will say I could have sworn every piece of religious text I've ever read throughout my studies of theology said we are not supposed to judge each other. That is not our job and our purpose. So let's stop it. Peace and blessings, people. That's my message for today. I hope everybody can use their EBT cards tomorrow. I hope everybody can use their child support cards. I'm going to be honest, I'm mad because I need my child support money. For real, for real. It is what it is, people. Be breezy because y'all might look up and you know we not already heard about the government stockpiling weapons and food. They ain't stockpiling it for us. What's going to go down? Watch your news. Better yet, read some books. Watch some movies. They not already put the message out there. We just ain't seen it. We haven't paid attention to it. And it's time we need to because now you got the government shut down. We could have a military coup any day now. You'd never know it because they ain't going to tell us. We the, we the low men on the totem pole. We down here. 
all the big wigs know. Just like in what was the movie Day After Tomorrow, where they found out people was buying seats on the boat because they knew the world was going to flood. What makes y'all think that ain't already happening? Keep your eyes open, people. That's my message.